Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Dimitri. Uh, I'm working with the foundation for about three years. And uh, for a long time, Ethereum testing was performed by one person, Christoph Jensch. Uh, he initially invited me to the Ethereum Foundation. And then I continued uh, his work. So today I will describe you for you how the testing process goes in Ethereum and uh, what we achieved for the last year thanks Shanghai. So what we have is a yellow paper, which is a protocol. Uh, yellow paper describes the Ethereum protocol, but it doesn't make it easier to understand. Actually, uh, this picture represents yellow paper really well. Uh, nobody able to understand this, unless Vitalik maybe. <laughs> And uh, we have lots of implementation of this protocol written on different languages, different clients. And uh, the testing problem is to make sure that every of the client is in consensus with each other. And they interpret, they uh, implemented this yellow paper rules um, in a way that there are no consensus issues between themselves. So to do that, we have uh, our testing suit. Each test file is a JSON uh, instructions encoded in JSON file. And um, we could select um, three main types of the test. So the first one is a, is a VM test. It's basically a um, number of instructions for EVM byte machine. It's uh, the most simple test in the whole test suit. So if, uh, if there is any developers here, you could, uh, if, and if you're implementing EVM, you could start with VM tests, it's the most simple ones. Uh, the next is a state test, it's a bit more complex than a VM test. It, it has um, um, accounts, transactions, and state changes, state hashes, and uh, so it's a bit more complex. And the most sophisticated test is a blockchain. It has actual mining difficulty and that's how algorithm is implemented. Well, and for a long time, we required all the clients to implement a uh, custom test tool. Uh, so they had to read these JSON files and implement this uh, and compare the results. Uh, it was not so, uh, uh, so good. So we use a C++ client to run a um, test source, which is my job is uh, to keep those sources, test sources updated with the most recent issues discovered and um, what we are trying to achieve is to create lots of lots of different test source files describing all of the possible situations which we could um, um, get in a EVM code execution. And then C++ then executes those instructions and it creates a final test. Final test is being processed by other clients and um, they compare their results to the C++ clients, and that's how we see if everyone agrees with C++ client, which is uh, like a golden star there. If there is an issue, we open a dispute and discuss whether we have to make a change in the C++ client or other clients. So uh, we had a couple of problems. Um, the first problem is to create an ultimate test suite which covers all of the code, all, all of the possible situations which we could run and possibly find all of the bugs and consensus issues. The second problem is that uh, clients, they should execute our tests. And because uh, before we are required to make the clients this custom tool, um, I had to manually ask every client developer, have you run this test? Have you updated the test repository? Is it updated? And one time I discovered that Go client uh, wasn't uh, running the recent test for about half of a year. And there was a, there was a hard fork already and they still not, kept, uh, not catching up with the test. Um, not to mention that I don't know the status of other clients. Um, okay. So how we solve those issues? To get the best code coverage, first we have a test cases list, which could be found on a, a Google Documents. Uh, this is a manual test cases. If you came up with an idea for test case, you could manually add this 
for this. Uh, also, I, I want to mention, if you think you know how to make a consensus issue, there is a reward for bug bounty from the foundation. If you discover a consensus issue, you could get money <laughs> if you want. Okay. And uh, so to cover even more cases, you can, you can possibly come up with uh, every situation, but I think it's impossible. So we did uh, some tools that uh, basically run random code, random even byte code on not really random, like fast testing is a smart random code. And this code, hope, we hope that it will find some consensus ratio, and uh, it did. Uh, another approach will be to use a fancy tool that will analyze a source of a client and then run different bytecode executions and uh, maybe some fancy algorithms and uh, will produce uh, a very, very good test. Okay. okay, to solve the next issue with the client being updated, uh, last year I mentioned that we have a Hive tool in development and uh, now it's live and working. Now we no longer require every client to implement their custom test tool. They just need to provide a client and an RPC interface. And uh, then any client could be integrated in a Hive tool. And this Hive tool performs a test execution mm, automatically. And uh, we have a result we could see on our Hive stats page, the results of all the test execution on every client. Uh, also, Clients have uh, continuous integration builds in a GitHub. Each commit uh, uh, executes this continuous integration test in a GitHub, which uh, synced with uh, our test repo, Ethereum test. And uh, I still personally do uh, ask people on the Skype or other channels whether they perform the le most recent test execution. Um, another field of work, uh, which was performed by Casey, uh, he did standardization of EVM logs. And by doing this, we could now compare that not only we have the same hash after the test execution, but the way we get to that hash is exactly the same on every client. And uh, for the past year, we added some uh, debugging for the test X tool, which I'm a developer of. And uh, is basically a whole new field of work with, uh, with those uh, traces for EVM and uh, better debugging. Okay, and uh, another update for, the, for this year will be my personal fork coverage. By fork, I mean uh, Ethereum has um, certain hard fork points like Homestand and uh, other proposals which we actually don't have a consensus about many of those forks. I called like EAP 158 and others called uh, some kind of superior dragon. And um, those points uh, means that from this particular block, uh, the protocol has changed and we have to test that all the changes and all of the clients uh, are um, implemented correctly. But uh, we have a test cases and there um, I had manually to copy all of the test cases for each hard fork. And then um, I came up with an idea of a general test format. So now I describe one single test case and then C++ convert this test and execute it on every fork and produces a couple of output final tests, which actually uh, a result of this particular test cases on every fork. That, that is what I call general tests. And for the past year, I realized uh, state test, which is now general. Every state test is being executed on every fork. And in future, all of the test cases that we have will be executed. Um, we, I just have to run one comment, and all of the test cases will be um, uh, generated on the recent forks. Same with blockchain test, and uh, next will be the transaction test. Um, also, thanks to Yoichi, he did uh, awesome 
uh, documentation about how he learned because he has joined us uh, this year. He um, created the documentation of his steps uh, when he uh, was learning the process of test generator, generating the test, and then he created this uh, documentation. Uh, if you're interested in the running the test execution yourself, or if you're a developer and you need to know how this works, there is now a updated documentation. Uh, you could take the picture of the links. And um, you could see that now our testing team is not a single person. We have like lots of people joining. And most of them joined us this year. So special thanks to all of them working together on tests. Okay. We still have time for questions. Okay. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah, not all of the tests are running on the Hive, unfortunately. Uh, so general state tests are being converted in a blockchain test. This is another update. So I just run a command, and all of the general state tests being converted in blockchain tests, which then will be run on Hive. Okay, um, okay thanks, Dimitri. Okay.